Today I'm out in Hawaii with the most important news from Toyota this year, or one might say the worst kept secret. This is the all new 2024 Toyota Tacoma. And yes, for 2024, it is entirely new. New engines, new transmissions, new four wheel drive systems, including the first four wheel drive full time system that we've ever seen in a Tacoma. Now, the structure of the Tacoma also changes a little bit. There's one big change back here. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to see it out here but you will be able to th get Tacoma with two seats and just two doors. They're bringing back the extra cab. In the previous generation, there were some small doors back here and they opened in suicide fashion. No more, that cab's gonna stop right about here. There will be extra storage behind the front seats, but two doors, two seats only. Most customers though, they're gonna be getting the four door model right like this. And you can get the four door with either the short bed or the long bed, so five foot or six foot bed in the rear. Under the hood, the Tacoma comes in four different power levels, but some Toyota traditionalists may be upset that there's no naturally aspirated V6 engine anymore. Instead, every Tacoma in the lineup is gonna get a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine with or without hybrid. The base model produces 228 horsepower. The model with the available six speed manual, which I know some folks are really interested in, that gets 270 horsepower, but this one is 326 horsepower because it gets the higher output version of the 2.4 278 horsepower, plus an electric motor in the back. Instead of the old six-speed automatic, every version of the Tacoma gets a new eight-speed automatic, based off of the eight speeds that Toyota has used in other models before, of course. This does not use the 10-speed auto that you do find in the larger Tundra. Now, at this point in time, we don't have any fuel economy numbers, but I wouldn't be surprised if the hybrid was the most fuel-efficient mid-sized truck in America by a slight hair, if you get the right trim, of course, because this TRD off-road model or TRD Pro model rather, does not have the massive air dam underneath that you do find in the other trims. All the trucks we were able to sample today had the clearance lights well integrated into the bed. That's a really cool touch. You can turn those on and off inside the cab, of course. And then down here, you'll notice that we have a very similar style to what we see in the Tundra, only a little bit more discreet, I would say. We have that same sort of sharp crease that runs front and back in this TRD Pro model. It has the black paint on, on top. It's a two-tone setup big iForce Max logo there. That's what they're calling the hybrid system in this model. Again, same 2.4 liter turbo you find in most versions of the Tacoma with the addition of a single electric motor and an eight speed auto. LED taillights back here and a segment first power tailgate in the back. And we have a button for the power tailgate on either tail lamp module. So left and right. You can also open and close it from the inside or from the button right there in that release. If you want a manual transmission, that's gonna be available in the TRD Sport. That's what this model is here. You can see we get a slightly reworked front end design, still that pretty big air dam there below, but this is removable. Uh, under the hood, remember that the manual transmission model gets a little bit less power than we find in the automatic transmission version. But if you want three pedals, this is the way to go. And of course, that's the manual transmission shifter right there. You can see how well it's integrated into the dashboard. We'll take a look at the dash of the rest of the lineup here pretty soon. We have a clutch start button right over there. And then over here, we have some auxiliary switches, which you're gonna see in some of the other trims as well. Sort of an unexpected twist, we have four-way adjustable power lumbar, even in this TRD Sport trim. Now, something that's really gonna make a lot of Tacoma traditionalists happy is that we don't have drum brakes in the back anymore. We have four-wheel discs and we have upgraded brakes if you get the off-roady versions of the Tacoma. That's a really nice thing to see. We also have an interesting suspension twist back here. Most of the versions of Tacoma will get coil springs in the back, although the base versions will still have leaf springs. Toyota said that they were able to incorporate those into all of the versions of the Tacoma using essentially the same frame. So the mounting points change, but we actually have coil springs versus leaf springs in most of the trims out there. And then this TRD Sport even has the power tailgate available. For me at least, the most interesting trim of the new Tacoma is the limited trim, and there are a few reasons for that. This has a whole bunch of segment firsts, but let's talk about the design up front. You notice we have more chrome. I actually happen to like chrome in a truck, so I think that's a really good look there. Again, we have that big air dam at the bottom, but we also have a chrome strip right here in the middle around those fog lights. One thing I should mention at this point is that the radar sensor is right here in the middle. It's not behind the glass like we find in some small trucks. That means that if you plan on putting an aftermarket brush guard or something like that on your truck, keep in mind the position of that sensor. It may have to move around. Full LED headlights here, of course. And then as we move around to the side, we start noticing some of the differences between this and the rest of the Tacoma lineup. This is gonna be the only Tacoma and the only mid-sized truck in North America with an adaptive suspension system. This is gonna have a pretty traditional adaptive damper setup with active valves inside the dampers but it's probably gonna give us the best ride in the midsize segment, whether it's loaded or unloaded. Obviously, extra chrome going on there for the wheels. 
And if you get the optional iForce Max system in the limited trim of the Tacoma only, you get something very unusual for any truck around the world. You get an actual Torsen limited slip differential in the middle. Most pickup trucks just have a two-speed transfer case and then an active clutch pack, depending on the kind of truck. So if you're looking at, say, a Colorado or Canyon with auto four-wheel drive, that's what's going on. Two-speed transfer case, active clutch will send power to the front axle or completely disconnect the front axle. This will actually have a true center differential, just like a Toyota 4Runner. So you can bet what the new 4Runner is probably gonna get under the sheet metal once we finally see it. That likely means this is gonna be the best option in the segment for daily driving out on slippery surfaces, say ice, snow, etc. This kind of system is gonna balance power front to rear all the time a bit more equitably than those clutch pack type systems. It also may be a little bit better at overheating versus some of those automatic systems as well. Back here you'll notice that the Limited gets the same bed and big cab arrangement that we find in the rest of the lineup. And for a bit better look here at the power tailgate, we have buttons on both rear tail lamps and this is power up and power down, which is a really nice touch. The Tacoma offers us a bunch of different camera views in the rear. One camera is here right next to the release for that hatch. We also have a light shining down there on your tow hitch so that we can see how the ball and the hitch are aligned with one another. Four and seven pin wiring harness connections happen there. And then back here, we find two additional cameras right up there by the third brake light and then a powered sliding window. Another segment first and something I really wish the Canyon Denali offered because it had huge running boards. The first time we've ever seen a power running board in a midsize truck. I honestly can't believe that this has taken so long to get to the midsize segment because midsize trucks just aren't as small as they used to be. And that really means a lot of practicality for these kind of vehicles. If you want to do some mild off-roading, but you still want the step to get into the cabin, that's really a great feature. Otherwise, you'd have a step that hung down or you'd want rock rails that just didn't give you that extra step up. Let's check out the interior of this limited trim first. We have a pretty standard size moonroof just over the driver and front passenger's head. That's a nice touch. High adjustable shoulder belts for the driver and front passenger. This obviously has the leather upholstery. We have Brian back there in the back seat holding the light for me. Plenty of headroom back there, but you can see that that roof line really dishes up there. So Brian's actually kind of looking at the area where that sunroof will tuck into. How's the leg room back there, Brian? You know, I used to have a Tacoma last generation, and I would say this is comparable, but perhaps a little bit tighter in terms of knee room. Yeah, it might actually be a little bit smaller there. This front seat, as you can see, is not overly far back. That was actually just about right for me at six feet tall as a passenger. We have the same sort of, or actually a similar sort of camo style accents right there inside the perforations. These seats are heated and ventilated in the limited trim. Interestingly enough, I kind of assumed that the Denali would be the most premium midsize truck, but I think Toyota really has them beat with this new Tacoma. Over here, we have what looks like real wood trim, but is in fact fake wood. Big Tacoma logo right there, very similar to what we find in the other trims. Soft touch, stitched glove box cover right there. There's actually a towel inside for some reason. That is a little on the small side though. I would want something a little bit bigger, but there's some additional storage in that little tray area right there. And then we have this absolutely enormous infotainment screen right in the middle of everything. This of course supports wireless CarPlay and Android Auto integration. It's a very well featured system. I have to say Toyota did a really great job with this setup. It is not as function rich as some of the more expensive vehicles in this segment. It doesn't offer some of the Google app integration that we find in the GM setup, but I like the size of this screen. Let me know what you think about its position here in the dashboard. Speaking of in the dashboard, we have the optional JBL center channel speaker, which will pop out and become a Bluetooth speaker for your smartphone. That is one of the coolest things I've seen in a while. And then over here on this side, we have one little USB-C port right there that helps you uh, charge your smartphone in that tray. Moving down here, two big air vents, the controls for the automatic climate control. This is a dual zone system. Heated steering wheel is right over there. Down here, we have two high output USB-C charge ports, 52.5 watts total, but 45 watts in each one. So you could charge your MacBook there, absolutely no problem. We have a Qi wireless charging mat over there, parking brake, auto brake hold, the controls for the four-wheel drive system over here are interesting. In the limited trim, we get H4F, H4L, L4L. That's basically low ratio four-wheel drive. Uh, this is locked center four-wheel drive. And then this is full-time four-wheel drive. That's apparently what that is. Over here, we get the tow haul mode button, drive mode toggles. This allows us to rotate around for certain functions. And then the drive mode button right there. You can see if I rotate that around, 
things will change up here. We get the custom sport, sport S modes, and then we get the same sort of animations right there in that full LCD instrument cluster. The 360 camera view is pretty handy. You can either let it spin around like that, or you can pause it at a particular point, but you can't just click and drag, which I think is a bit of a bummer. You can also change the view to that particular arrangement. And if I put this in reverse, you can see we have a whole bunch of different camera views right there. So there's that 360, you can go backwards, you can go forwards, you can see the side, you get that top down uh, bed view, which is really cool. You get an auxiliary input view. We don't have an auxiliary camera connected at the moment, um, but we also have a off-road view right there where we get some little off-road information. And then for backing up to your trailer, we have that very top-down view with that camera looking right over where the ball of your trailer would be. Speaking of trailering, we have an integrated trailer brake controller. It's right over there to the left side of the steering wheel. It's a good place. Power button is up there. Pretty decently sized cup holders back here with a large center armrest that's very padded. Small amount of room there. Remember the transmission and transfer case, all that's going on underneath that area. The steering wheel is very similar to what we find in the Tundra. Same sort of buttons. This toggles some of the functions up there in that multifunction display. We have volume up, down, track forward, backward, mode button. We have the buttons for the cruise control system, but no paddle shifters on the back. That's something that I would really have loved to have seen. You can change the gears. You can do that over here with the shifter by moving that over to the left side. There's a big button bank to the left of the steering wheel. That's where we find a button for the power tailgate, onboard 2.4 kilowatt inverter in the hybrid model, stability and traction control. If you got the auxiliary switches, they would be down here in this area. That's a really cool touch that we now see. Buttons for the power folding running boards right there. And of course, the cargo light in the back. Let's talk about the seats. One big complaint with the previous generation Tacoma, well, actually previous generations of Tacoma, was that the seating position was unusual. Felt like you had your arms and legs stuck out in front of you. We don't find that anymore. We find a seat bottom cushion that is significantly higher off the ground than the outgoing model. And because the entire cab is a little bit higher, it's still pretty comfortable as far as headroom if you want to sit in a more upright position as a taller person. We also have four-way adjustable lumbar support for the passenger side seat, which is pretty surprising. And this happens in a decent number of trims. This is one of the very few pickup trucks period in North America now that offers four-way lumbar, something that oddly enough, you won't even find in the new Toyota Grand Highlander. But let's check out the back seat because that, uh, that is not quite as roomy as I thought it might be. Back here, I can definitely fit back here at six feet tall. I have maybe an inch of leg room on the outboard side, a little bit less on the inboard side. Things get kind of tight, <laughs> scooting over to this side. Driver's seat is a little bit further back at its tracks. As you can see, there's not a lot of room going on there. But down here, we have some cool touches. USB-C charge ports, that 2.4 kilowatt onboard inverter with a grounded outlet right there, two big cup holders in the center console. But interestingly, no air vents for the back seats. Now, since this is a hybrid model, the hybrid battery pack is right here under this rear bench seat. However, the rear seat backs still fold forward, so you can put a lot of cargo in here. And then back there is where we have a little bit of storage room. We also have the tire iron and the jack. And then if I get out of this side, fold the other seat back down, this is where we find the JBL speaker in vehicles that have the JBL speaker option. Otherwise, it would be a little bit of additional storage space. Now, rather unfortunately, we had a bit of an audio issue here. So this shot, I'm just voicing over. This is the interior of the new TRD Pro trim. You can see the red accents on the Toyota logo, the red stitching, the red leatherette on the dashboard. We also get red accents on the shifter and of course on the steering wheel as well. We get that classic red TRD start button. And then I think Toyota has been doing a really great job with leather upholstery lately, especially red leather upholstery. You can see the red seats in this particular model. You can actually get red seats in a variety of different Toyotas, including the Camry and even the Highlander. Over here, we have the controls for the four wheel drive system. You can see we have two high, four high and four low. And then we get the multi-terrain selection, drive mode selectors, etc. Those all move down from the ceiling down here to the console. Uh, locking rear differential, disconnectable sway bars up front. In the middle of the upholstery, you can see they have a sort of digital camo motif going on, and that's actually inside the perforations of the seat back, giving it a bit more of a discreet look than a multicolored leather upholstery piece would. The new TRD Pro is going to have a really interesting seat. Back here, you'll notice we have what looks like a Rube Goldberg contraption going on here. We basically have a pneumatic system to help dampen vibrations and motions in the driver's seat and front passenger seat. 
Here we have valves so you can actually bypass the system for regular street driving or trail driving. And then up here we have a pressure gauge and then the air filler nozzle. That's where you'd actually put air into the system. The owner's manual will give you a basic framework for what the pressure should be set for your particular body weight, but you'll notice that we don't get a power recline mechanism. On the other hand, it still offers a four-way adjustable lumbar support, which I really like. Now, the power recline mechanism, obviously that's logical because this motion, uh, the seat rather, is suppressing motions both in the seat back and seat bottom cushion. But on the downside, you will notice it takes up a reasonable amount of room in the rear. Now, the engineers here were saying that you could put your knees in this area, but obviously that's pretty limited. Your knees are gonna have to be fairly narrow. For this generation Tacoma, they're going to be two co-equal halo trims. We don't know pricing on them just yet. One might be more expensive than the other, but this is the new Trail Hunter trim. It takes a slightly different approach to off-roading versus the TRD Pro. We have a unique front end design with actual Trail Hunter logos right there inside of the headlights. And then we have a combination of Toyota accessories and some ARB accessories on it as well. So Trail Hunter logo here, we get rock rails down there, different roof rails up here. These are the ARB roof rails, ARB bracing back here. We still have the side lights integrated into the bed. That's a really cool touch. Of course, we get some suspension upgrades. We get old man emu shocks there, ARBs, of course, the urethane bump stops. That's a pretty decent view of the coil springs back here. You can also see the frame up here. The frame element, again, is the same whether you get the leaf springs or the coil springs, but the mounting points do change a little bit. Obviously, we get complete skid plates underneath the Trail Hunter model as well. And then back here in the rear, we have a revised bumper. So this is a full metal bumper. You can actually see the, uh, the weld lines there, which I think is pretty cool. Recovery hooks down there. Nice big beefy tow hitch down here. And then back here, we find the wiring harness connections for uh, the towing ability, which goes up to 6,500 pounds when properly equipped. That is still a bit below what we will find in the new Ford Ranger. Back here in the bed, again, composite bed going on, but on this side, we have an air compressor, which I really love if you do plan on overlanding. Uh, this actually saves a lot of space because you don't have to carry that air compressor with you. And then since this is gonna be the hybrid model, over there on that side, we find another outlet for the onboard 2.4 kilowatt inverter. On the inside, the Trail Hunter gets the gold accents with this uh, sort of green gray leather, which I think is really attractive. We get a power recline mechanism for the front seats because this does not have the same seat that we found in the TRD Pro. Obviously ventilated seat surfaces there. Over here in the center console, we have basically the same center console design that we find in the other Tacomas. Big Toto logo there with accenting in the same sort of gold, same sort of material right there. This kind of reminds me of uh, maybe a Formica countertop, but I do think it's kind of attractive. Down here, you'll notice the different four-wheel drive modes, two high, four high, four low. That's how you know that we are not in that limited trim. Over here, we also have a few additional modes like the multi-terrain select, crawl control, etc. Those are all actuated by the buttons and this knob rather than some buttons in the ceiling. So this is much better integrated than we've seen before. Over here, we have the controls for the electronic locking rear differential and the front switch sway bar disconnect option. That's kind of a cool touch as well. In case you're inside the cabin and you're wondering what trim you're in, we have Trail Hunter right there on the floor mats and Trail Hunter on the doors as well. Back to the TRD Sport, let's take a look at this interior. You can see that we have the blue accents on the dashboard and on the doors. I have to say, I really like these blue accents that some car companies are putting in their latest models. We, of course, get the TRD logo over there on the doors, but we don't get uh, additional blue accents, like the power button still remains that TRD red right there. You'll notice that we have a full LCD instrument cluster. You're actually gonna find that in a decent number of models in the Tacoma lineup, but the full color heads up display, that's reserved for the more expensive models only. This this one again has the six speed manual transmission shifter there. Same sort of intelligent manual transmission mode that helps you a little bit with stall prevention. Definitely something to be concerned about when we have a smaller displacement engine. The controls for the part time four wheel drive system. And then we have this clutch start button over here that will let you start the vehicle in gear and basically use the starter motor to help you get up a hill or get started. Here you can see the grab handle. It seems to be pretty beefy in most models, although it does move around a little bit. It's a kind of a grocery bag holder right there. And then moving out, we see four-way adjustable lumbar support, kind of an interesting touch, even in this TRD Sport model with the cloth seats and that two-tone setup. Over here, you can see that TRD logo a little bit better, and they've angled the door handles to also give you an additional grab location. Moving to the back, bearing in mind that this is not a hybrid trim, we actually find a usable storage area under the rear seats, but in kind of a weird twist, these don't just latch in place up here. They actually use a little piece of fabric and a snap right there. So you actually have to unsnap that and pull it off. But under this area, we find a lot more storage area. 
right there behind the driver's seat. Definitely fishing rods, things like that could fit in there pretty easily. We just have this one bump out over here on the passenger side. We have an inverter still in this model, but it's 400 watts, not 2.4 kilowatts. It's also selectable to a 100 watt mode. And then we get those USB-C charge points back there. And in case you're wondering, the smaller inverter still powers an outlet back here in the cargo area. Unfortunately, at this point in time, I don't have any pricing, but we know that the Tacoma is going on sale later in 2023. If, however, you want the Hybrid Max, which means you might want the Torsen Limited Slip Differential in the middle, then you're gonna have to wait until early 2024. That's when all of the various hybrid models will become available. For me though, I am really intrigued about this Tacoma Limited. It's gonna be very unique in the mid-size truck segment. And to be honest, other than the real wood trim missing on the inside, I think this is better than the Canyon Denali, which I was already really impressed about last time I saw it. Now, obviously, if you want more power, you'll find that in the Ford Ranger. The Ranger has not one, but two different twin turbo sixes available, the 2.7 or the three liter twin turbo. And in the Tacoma lineup, it's really just gonna be the 2.4 liter turbo standard across the lineup with or without hybrid and two different power levels, of course, for that uh, main version of the 2.4. Toyota traditionalists may not like that. If that is you, then you might want to take a look at something like the Nissan Frontier or the Jeep Gladiator. They're really gonna be the only naturally aspirated V6 options left. You won't find one in the GMC, you won't find one in the Chevy. Um, you will find one in the Honda Ridgeline, but it's not exactly the same thing as this Tacoma. Obviously, pricing is gonna factor big into this. I would expect this limited trim to probably approach the price tag of the Denali, possibly be a little bit less expensive though, because Toyota is not calling this a halo trim. They're reserving that for the TRD Pro and the new Trail Hunter. Those will be the most expensive versions of the Tacoma for 2024. Be sure and let me know what you think about all that down there in the comment section below and which Tacoma are you interested in? Like me, are you really interested in the Limited or are you more interested in one of the off-road flavors? See all of you next week.